This is session one of looking at improving your original writing, looking at creative writing, paper one, question five. Before you start, you should have a copy of the AQA creative writing examples and a table to record new vocabulary. OK, looking quickly at the AQA criteria, you can see that this is guidance given to students about what examiners are looking for. So you're expected to demonstrate a number of different writing skills for this question, which is assessment objective five. And actually they bullet point through what they are specifically looking for. That you're paying attention to audience and register. So you're writing for the right people and you're writing in the right style. That actually you've made sure that you're looking at the right purpose and a lot of the time this is going to be a creative writing um, competition style piece. They could put in things into the question like um, narrative or description, opening of a story, short story. Try and make sure that you're doing the right thing. They're looking then at the quality of your vocabulary and phrasing. It's always better to try more ambitious vocabulary, even if you don't get the spelling quite right. Effective use of linguistic devices. Think about here methods and terminology that you've noticed in other people's writing. So it's all the things like metaphor, simile, alliteration, personification, an extended metaphor, uh, triples, one sentence paragraph, um, onomatopoeia, sibilance. Any of those things that you've noticed in someone else's work, you can use in your own. Same goes for the effective use of structural features. By the time you get round to doing this question on the paper, you will have done question three. So you will have thought about focus, where you're going to start your focus and why, what effect you want that to have. Where your focus is going to go next, what order are you going to reveal information in and why. Why is that better than doing it another way you might have considered? You might want to link the beginning and the ending together to give your piece a cyclic um, nature. You might want to repeat an idea or an image to make sure the piece hangs together properly. The next one is a little bit more difficult to describe engagement through subject matter and detail. Um, you've got the instruction and make sure that you look at both parts of the instruction, but actually making sure that you are doing something imaginative with that task, making sure that you're writing at times a lot about a little bit rather than trying to describe the whole plot of a Hollywood film. Linking and development of ideas. Does your narrative flow? Can your reader follow it? Um, does one idea kind of fluently slide into another? Or if you're trying to change focus or um, create a pivotal moment, is that done in a way that makes sense? Have you used paragraphs effectively and varied length of paragraphs? There should always be a one sentence paragraph in your writing somewhere. And are you using discourse markers? Are you using those things that are um, making your writing hang together properly? You're not jumping round. If you think back to the 2017 Rosabel paper, AQA have now released some material to get you to think about um, how that could have been done well. So you can take those hints back up into your revision. So this document came from AQA after the 2017 paper. And it's got some useful advice on it. It says that actually there will be a choice of creative writing tasks. It may be two narratives, it may be two descriptions, and it may be a narrative or a description. They will be linked by ideas thematically, by theme, to the source material in section A. So you remember Rosabel in 2017 was on a bus and the June 2017 um, stimulus, the picture stimulus was a bus 
And then the second one was two people from very different backgrounds, like Rosabelle and her customer. They don't label them A and B, and they say this is deliberate. There's a frequently an overlap of purpose. And actually, they say there's no clear distinction sometimes between a story and a description. Narrative pieces will have engaging description and description may be structured within a narrative framework. So it's a good idea that is well written that's being rewarded, which hopefully should be reassuring to you. And look, it says there the quality of writing is being assessed and it's the same mark scheme. So there's quite a lot of um, freedom in terms of what you're writing about. Interestingly as well is this bit at the bottom. It says there will always be a picture stimulus for the first option. So take it that if you're somebody who needs a picture to go off, you will always get a picture. You're expected to base your creative writing on the given focus, but use the picture as a springboard for your imagination. So actually, it's the idea of suggested by. You can get away with quite a lot. Read through this piece by yourself. Press play again when you've read it and actually do read it. Make sure you know what's going on. Read it now. Okay, you should now have read that piece fully. Okay, this is an example of one student's reaction, one student's response to that text we looked at um, about the idea of the bus going off that picture. And if I was marking it, I would have with me the criteria that AQA wants you to think about. As you go through it, if there are words you don't know and I explain them, write them down in your table. If there are words you don't know that I don't explain, then make a note of them as well. You're aiming to get as many examples of, of, of ambitious vocabulary as you can that you can then use in your own stories. Okay, so through the haze of the window, the city burned before her in a cacophony of neon laser lights, blazing across the world of darkness like stars across a night sky. Well, that's an effective opening. I like the word haze. Um, cacophony is ambitious vocab. It means um, a mixture of sounds which sounds discordant. Um, so this, this um, not only is, is it ambitious vocab, but actually you've got cacophony relating to sound and it's describing neon laser lights. So you've got this kind of mixing up of the senses, synesthesia. It blazes, um, I like blaze and haze work well together, across the world of darkness like stars across a night sky. So the simile there. Upon the great stone and metal monoliths, a monolith is like a big stone pillar. Um, the stars danced and flashed, swirled and sparkled in proud shades of red, green, yellow, blue. Every colour that could be imagined was roaring in the silent symphony. There's an awful lot going on there. The stars are dancing. There's proud shades of red, so nice lots of personification. Every colour that could be imagined was roaring, again personification. Silent symphony. You've got ideas of noise that contrasts with cacophony. The lights played and twinkled in her wide eyes. That's a good short sentence, um, that compound sentence after this big long list. Okay. I've also noticed that look, there's a semicolon there that's been used correctly as well as the different sentence lengths. The city rose within her, a feeling long forgotten colon, one of wonder, beauty and adventure, triple, one subdued by the monotony of life, so boredom, monotone, one colour, one that had been sorely missed. Sharing the will of those terrific persistent stars, she tore her eyes away from the scene to look back, to reflect how she had ever come to live without this. 
So, so far it's really good verb choice for tour. And actually you've got the stars, the idea of the stars kind of linking in each paragraph so far. Around her, she saw the same tired people, heads down, dead still, as if shackled, really good word means kind of handcuffed, manacled, tied together, um, trapped by some unhappy ma master. So again, simile. But now she saw so much more. Their lives and dreams and meaning were unveiled through the eye of her vivid imagination. Vivid, so lively, colourful, bright. With this newfound childlike wonder, she saw movie stars, murderers, secret aliens. Again, this person is good at triples. As if gazing at them through a kaleidoscope. And we'll come back to that idea later. If you don't know what a kaleidoscope is, go and look it up now. Herself, she saw as an astronaut, gliding past the bright, fiery suns in her spaceship. Look at the word order there. They've definitely, deliberately put the reference to the girl first to prioritise it. Once more, she gazed out through the fogged screen. So you've got that link of looking through to see fellow vessels buzzing past and to them she waved. She closed her eyes and smiled, reclining against the soft comfort of her chair and listened to every varied beep and whir, bit of onomatopoeia. The gentle but powerful growl, um, zoomorphism, of the engine soothed her, every now and then breaking as a piece of music faded in and then just as rapidly faded out forever. The light and noise faded. Now, I'm not quite sure that she's used faded deliberately twice there, but... We'll let that go. The light and noise faded slowly away, but just as the embrace of rest was closing around her. Look at that. All of a sudden, with the word embrace, sleep is kind of hugging her, soothing her. So I'm aware of the connotations of that. Um, a shrill, monotonous sound cut through the silence. I query, to be honest, shrill and monotonous. It's kind of oxymoronic. Um, if something's a monotone, actually, no, it, it could be. Yeah, OK, I'll let that, let them, they can have that. And it cut through the silence rather than she heard a, that's the show, don't tell. Last stop for the night. Now, that is a good trick, OK, because there's direct speech in there. It's punctuated correctly. But by not putting a he said, she said, they said of it, they've um, kind of got rid of some of the potential for messing up the punctuation. And all you've got to remember is new speaker, new line, put it in inverted commas. Then that's correctly punctuated. So you get more credit for that range. Disturbed and unsettled, she disembarked from the bus. Disembarked is a good word for got off. Stepping on the rough, damp pavement. Weary, she gazed up. So a nice short sentence. And look at how the sentences are um, varied in terms of their starting. It's not just she did this, she did this, she did this. They've started there with two past tense verbs and there with the word weary. Weary, she gazed up. As adjective. Some neon signs glowed above the entrance to a tower. Cars droned past just as they had always done. She frowned and looked up again, but the sky was dark and colourless, covered in cloud. It was the same dull sky she'd seen thousands of times before. She stood there, still, as if shocked. OK, now, if you think actually, action-wise, not a right lot happens in that um, extract. She is on a bus. She's looking out of the window. She's looking at what she sees. And then she gets off and, and the kind of magic has disappeared. So really, there's been no huge um, plot twists or anything. And it's just the idea that, you know, she's surprised at the end. But I think she's ended or he's ended where they wanted this to end. So looking at it, audience register, yes, purpose, yes, vocab, definitely, linguistic devices, effective use of structural features. Well, yes, there's kind of the um, speech there, 
the ending, um, the focus is good, the focus changes, it goes in and out of her head, um, definitely answered the question, linked and developed ideas and varied paragraphs and discourse markers, look there's a discourse marker once more, um, kind of moving on logically. Okay, so just looking at language analysis then. Um, this person has really thought quite hard about all of their word choices. And that means that actually you can go and do a language analysis on this as you could on a paper one. So I'm just going to box off one um, section. Okay, and I'd like you to annotate that on your copy, please, as if you were doing a language analysis. So that is a paper one, question two. Okay, you should now have some annotation on your copy, and please don't listen to this until you have done it by yourself, um, and I will go through what I would maybe pick up on. So around her, she saw the same tired people, heads down, dead still. Um, the idea of being dead still. So the connotations there, you've got that idea of, um, let's put it down here, life missing, um, static. As if is a simile. And then I look at what that simile is actually showing as if shackled by some unhappy master. So actually these tired people are trapped, enslaved, even master is. Unhappy, so it's painting a pic. Well, I'm not going to say painting a picture because that, that's a bad phrase to use. Um, even Master is unhappy creating the impression of a society which is enslaved. But now she saw so much more. Okay, so actually she has unique and surprising insight. Um, it's actually, if you know the word epiphany, epiphany equals sudden. Oops. insight or revelation. She's usually got religious connotations. Um, their lives and dreams and meaning, so polysyndeton triple, um, the cumulative effect of that moment of realisation, were unveiled. Um, again, that idea of shown to her. Um, Displayed, if you unveil something uncovered, like it's all of a sudden she's been let into a secret through the eye of her vivid imagination. With this newfound childlike wonder, she saw movie stars murder as secret aliens. So that's the metaphor. And again, you've got the polysyndeton. Adding to the kind of cumulative effect of her inside. Movie stars murder as secret aliens. She's dealing with the language of film and fantasy. Excitement. Which compared all of a sudden the same tired people 
are now really exciting. So there's the contrast. As if gazing at them. So again, another simile through a kaleidoscope. You should have looked at what a kaleidoscope is, but actually looking at the idea of its child's toy. It makes the world beautiful, fantastic, colourful, not real. Um, herself she saw as an astronaut gliding past the bright fiery suns in her spaceship. So it's exploring. And it's all linking to that idea of childlike wonder that she's talking about there. So if you were looking at getting a seven or an eight there, you would be talking about the contrast that her imagination is creating with this moment of realisation, this moment of revelation, where the tired people, through use of polysyndeton triples and metaphor, become movie stars, murderers and secret aliens, you'd talk about the idea of this knowledge being displayed to her kind of in a sudden um, revelation, sudden epiphany. And all of a sudden these people who are dead still, um, enslaved by their lives as shown by that simile, become um, objects of, of adventure and curiosity. It's just interesting to see how many techniques have been used there if you start to unpick it. Okay, as a final thing then now, what I'd like you to do is to take this picture and to write a minimum of one paragraph, either describing what's in the picture or the opening paragraph to a story or narrative suggested by that picture. I'd like you to try and use some of the vocabulary that you've identified from the previous piece. I'd like you to try and use some ambitious punctuation that you've identified from the previous piece. And to really think about crafting so you could do your own um, language analysis on it. Really try and think of the effect that you're after. I'll be taking those paragraphs in, please, along with your vocabulary tables.